In this video, I will do a calculation of the radius of an orbit that is uh, what we might call geosynchronous in that the satellite moves around the object once for one rotation of the object. So for the case of the Earth, that would be 24 hours. Um, the satellite uh, completes a, a spin around the Earth, roughly 24 hours. Um, we're going to do this based on a circular orbit and the gravitational attraction between the planet and the satellite or, or moon uh, supplies the required centripetal force. That'll be the basis for the calculation. So I don't know of any moons of planets that are, are synchronous with the uh, spin of the planet, but um, the satellite should have been uh, the word that was used there. So here's a, a drawing and a little start on the mathematics of the situation. Um, the shaded portion here is the planet and this is not to scale but the uh, satellite would be at some distance r from the center of the planet. The centripetal force is supplied by the gravitational force. The centripetal force would be the mass of the satellite times the centripetal acceleration that's expressed with v squared divided by r. And on the right side, the force of gravity, capital G, the constant of gravitation, the mass of the planet, mass of the satellite, multiply together and divide by r squared. So there's some simplifications that can be made. The mass of the satellite appears on both sides, so I'll cancel that. And then one factor of r in the denominator on both sides is canceled. That leaves us with V squared equals capital G mass of the planet divided by R. We can uh, substitute out the V by using the fact that the circumference of the circle, 2 pi R, divided by the orbit period, that provides us the meters per second for the velocity of the satellite. So I make that substitution, V squared then becomes 4 pi squared r squared over t squared equals g mass of the planet over r and then gathering together so the like factors uh, and preparing to solve for r we multiply both sides by r divide both sides by 4 pi r squared multiply both sides by t squared and we come up with our basic uh, calculation equation the cube of the radius of the orbit is equal to capital G, mass of the planet, period squared. This period needs to be in seconds, and then divide by 4 pi squared. So taking a look at some uh, facts about some objects in our solar system, starting with Venus, uh, the mass of Venus, 4.87 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, and it's retrograde in its spin. So I put a minus sign here. That's not really important. Uh, but it has a slow spin, 5,832 hours, and then that has to be converted to seconds. For the Earth, mass of 5.97, 10 to the 24th kilograms, uh, 23.9 hours <coughs> is the spin relative to the stars. Um, so this is not measured with relationship to position of the sun in the sky. It's, this, it's the raw rotation spin of the Earth, 23.9 hours. Uh, Mars, 24.7 hours. Jupiter, 9.9 hours. And then just for fun, I put in the Moon. The Moon spins once on its axis every 655 hours as it uh, moves around the Earth. So those are some numbers that we'll put in. And in doing the calculation, um, the all I have to do is put in the mass of the object and the period in seconds and square that. Um, so for Venus, the satellite would have to be located 1.54 times 10 to the ninth meters away from the center of Venus. That's, that's a large number. And um, I did a calculation here, a ratio of the uh, radius of the geosynchronous orbit divided by the radius of the planet. So it would be 255 uh, times the radius of Venus would be out to that orbit. And the others here as well, I'll reveal those. Um, so we have <coughs> 
for the case of the earth um, from the center of the earth out to where the uh, satellite would be 4.21 times 10 to the 7th meters that's 6.6 .6 times the radius of the earth and Mars 6.03 times the radius of Mars Jupiter 2.24 times the radius of Jupiter and for the moon 493 times the radius of the moon and I'll just caution you a little bit here and in, in, in thinking about some of these um, not all of these are going to be stable orbits um, this is too far out to be uh, controlled by the gravity of Venus and same for the moon it's too far away to be controlled by the gravity of the moon uh, there are other influences, um, notably the Earth's gravity, that would uh, influence this and not make this possible. But these other three are possible. We can have a geosynchronous satellite around the Earth, around Mars, around Jupiter. Um, the Jupiter number is smaller because Jupiter spins faster than uh, uh, the Earth or, or Mars. Um, and just to remind you, the uh, distance from the Earth to the Moon is 3.84 times 10 to the 8th meters. Um, so this is a considerable fraction of that distance. Um, in another video, I'm going to calculate the balancing point between the force of gravity of the planet and the Moon. Um, for the Earth and the Moon, that balance point is 3.61 times 10 to the 7th meters away from the Moon. So uh, we're getting you know, too far out for uh, the moon to hold on to a, a satellite that would move once around the moon every time the moon spins. Um, so these are some calculations. You might want to pause the video and uh, put these numbers into your calculator and see if you agree with those. But some basic calculations on the orbit size for a synchronous satellite around a planet such that the satellite would keep above the uh, some location on the planet continuously uh, so the satellite moves once around its orbit as the planet spins once that's the sense of geosynchronous so these videos are indexed at uh, two websites physics.gpclements.com and astronomy.gpclements.com it's totally free no registration you do not put in your name you do not put in your email address I hope you find some of these uh, videos useful and ask your instructor if you have questions